hello welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in in this video I just wanted to talk a little bit about my experience in Scotland I'm a novice salmon fisherman I've never done this really before and so I went to Scotland to explore and to experience something new um, I've been fishing for trout for 20 odd years um, in rivers and frankly was finding it all getting a bit boring and so I really wanted to uh, explore the opportunity of fishing uh, for salmon. And so I thought, well, the best place to go has got to be Scotland. And my experience actually in balance was pretty amazing. Um, and if you watch my previous video about, or my other video about the wine usk in Wales, uh, you know, Scotland... For me, having never really been to Scotland, I went to Scotland once before the pandemic uh, for a week with my friend Scott from Cornwall and we went up to the river Neath, Nith, probably pronounced that wrong, apologies if I have, uh, and had a week of salmon fishing. I loved it. Didn't catch anything. Absolutely loved it. It was brilliant. Le uh, got some casting lessons up there and then of course throughout the pandemic, forgot it all. Um, and then when we came to, uh, uh, to this year, I thought now with the change in circumstances uh, in my life, I'm going to explore the opportunity of salmon fishing and really try to do it, do it justice. And the reason why I'm doing it more of full time is because of the amount of conversations I've had with fishermen uh, in the location where you go to fish and they, they, you say, oh, I'm here for the fishing. I should have been here last week. Or, oh, it's not very good, probably be better next week. You know, on those kind of times, it's you've, you've booked that week and that's all you can do. And so my attitude now is I'm going to try to book um, my fishing so that uh, I, um, I'm there for three or four weeks and have a better chance of catching. So my Scottish fishing adventure started at Fish Ponds. Um... Yeah, fish ponds was brilliant because they were very, very helpful. Jim, it was called, Jim and Simon. And their, uh, fish ponds was new to them for this season because uh, they also do uh, a place called Delvin and Burbain. And that's actually where I caught my, my only salmon, uh, which was a Celt. Um, and I'm very proud of that. But uh, other people have been very dismissive. Um, of of salmon because I didn't catch it on the fly like traditionally on the fly I was sitting on the back of a boat and I wasn't really casting um, and so you know people have been quite dismissive about uh, about that uh, you know oh it wasn't a springer well you know what it was a, it's it's a salmon it's a salmon and it, you know it's something I've never caught before and I was really proud of it and I will say to all those people out there who think, well, it's not a springer. Well, it was, what was it then? It was still a salmon, wasn't it? I think it was a salmon. I mean, it's called a salmon. It's a salmon kelt, you know. Don't be so dismissive of people who are new to a sport. Because you know what? This is a crazy ass sport filled with mad people. We must be mad to do this. Um, and if you're starting out, um, don't piss on people's fireworks. You know, um, just have a little thought, a little bit of thought about it, because it might be all right for this person who I think it was called Sandy, um, who just said, well, I hate to hate to break it to you, but that's that's not that doesn't really count. And I thought, well, anyway, um, so fish ponds, they were they were great. Jim and Simon, very, very helpful, really enjoyed. In fact, I went for two days uh, at fish ponds. After that, I fished at Dull Guys. Uh, that was a 50 pound a day um, fish ponds with 50 pound a day that was great very helpful friendly chap Kirkock uh, was uh, 30 pounds um, with Gary the Gilly uh, he was a real character and I, I would definitely go there again very very helpful and a uh, bit of a 4x4 four four, uh, opportunity as well so I kind of really enjoyed both of those uh, so Kirkock was good uh, that was £30. After that, hmm, McClure, 
and upper isle, isle of mouth. Uh, I was attracted to this because this is the place that uh, um, White House, um, Paul Whitehouse and uh, Bob Mortimer went to. And so I was uh, I was attracted to it. But it was £97, pound, £99 pounds for the day. And it was in such high water. And I mean, I was on a day pass there a day ticket and i ended up spinning all day which was shattering and yeah the, the people were really nice but uh the gillies there uh i can't remember their names you know they had two uh two couples in boats and it kind of felt a little bit like all of their attention was on them you know it said nine o'clock i thought because I was new to it, it said 9 a.m. I thought 9 a.m. is what time you had to get there for, but it turns out that I should have been there at half past eight to start at nine. Um, and it, ironically, I arrived two or three minutes before they were getting into the boats. And all I was given is a basic sort of intro to the where I go and fish and I'm going to have to, to spin all day. And then I was kind of left to it. But if I'd been a few minutes, like one or two minutes past nine, I'd had no one there um, to help me. And I kind of felt it was a bit of a rip-off, frankly. I, I wouldn't go there again. Uh, Dalmarnock. Uh, I really liked Dalmarnock. I can't remember the name of the guy, uh, the gilly, but he made everybody soup at lunchtime. Um, and it was lovely as well. I'm sure, you know... It, but he made soup. That's probably the only time in all of my fishing adventures so far where uh, a ghillie's actually made you lunch. Um, that was great. £55 for the day that was. Well worth it. I would definitely go back. Gordon Castle. Uh, Gordon Castle Estate near... Um, I've got to pronounce it, but I'm going to get it wrong. So don't shoot me. I think it's... Um, uh, Fokabi, uh, Fokabi, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, fifty pound a day. I spent two hundred pounds with them. I was there fishing for four days on the Upper Bray, Lower Bray, the Castle Water, and another one, <laughs> which I can't remember what it's called. But I thought they uh, were fantastic. You met the gilly. Uh, the head gilly in the car park outside this pub and you meet there at 8 30 instructions are very clear and then the you then follow your gilly to the beat and i found all of them incredibly helpful especially a guy called david who was on the gordon castle the actual castle water um and he is a, a casting coach and instructor wow uh, he helped me out like uh, like no one before and so knowledgeable and so entertaining and by the end of that day I it was well worth the extra money I gave him you know it was well worth the tip because um, he helped me so much and now my circle C cast that's why I not blow my own trumpet but my circle C cast I think is pretty good you know and I can cover I can cover um, I can cover large rivers with that circle sea cast and not that I intend to hit the, the other side of the bank, but I can get it out there. And so in, he helped me amazingly. Uh, so they were great. Um, and also what I liked about the Gordon Castle was that I was paying £50 for the day, but there were people who came up to fish and they just bought a lease, like a 50-year lease. It was, it was like... Was it two hundred thousand pounds? Two hundred thousand pounds for fifty years, and when you kind of think about it, I thought, God, if I had that kind of money, would I drop that? Three weeks of fishing a year, one in the peak, one in the middle, and one in the low season. If I could, have, if I had the money in it, and I could afford something like that, I, I probably would pay it, but I don't, and I can't, so I won't. <laughs> um, but. I, what I was very impressed about was that they genuinely helped me as if 
like like they weren't favoriting favoriting the people who were there who'd paid the lease if you know what i mean there was no favoritism because they'd pay more money i just i just felt like the customer service was excellent all of the um uh, all of the huts the fishing huts were exceptionally well maintained um they could have done with putting the heating on a few times i felt i felt they could have blasted the heating on that was it with fish ponds uh our first experience the first day and scott uh, and i went uh like our first day we rocked up there the heat the um uh the wood burning stove was was roaring and lunchtime they got the whiskey out brilliant and i thought that's what it was going to be like every time sadly it wasn't but uh that was a great experience and then um after that uh so then castle grant was the next place i fished I fished there for two days, Castle Grant, £37.50 per day. Um, Fraser was the ghillie, it was on beat one, I think it was. And my friend Stephen caught his first, uh, caught a huge fish on a Calvin shrimp. And yeah, you know what? Uh, very friendly guys. There's also another ghillie called Alan who made me laugh hysterically. Great great guy um just again really really good really friendly good customer service and also here's the most impressive thing about castle grant i left my net there and i'm talking about that big pain in the ass uh, guy net uh which is like a salmon one and you know what they arranged to post it down when i paid for the postage but they arranged to post it down to me i mean that's brilliant that's that's excellent customer service after Castle Grant I then went on to the River Tweed um, and I fished at Lady Kirk that's one of my one of my best performing videos uh, and also the most one of the most memorable experiences because we had snow the night before and my car had no problems in the snow getting down there but there were some other really dangerous road road users down there who clearly had never driven in snow before sliding all over the place um, but Lady Kirk was great because it had the amazing fishing hut. Oh, it wasn't a fishing hut. It was a, sorry, I keep saying that. It's a netting, old netting station. And this wonderful log burning stove. And frankly, it was so cold outside. Uh, I was fishing into an upstream, bree, upstream gusting gale force winds. Uh, probably crazy to do it, really. But anyway, I paid my money. I was going to give it a go. And then... I fished on to, I fished for about two hours and then I thought well I'll go, start, go back to the hut and try the spinning rod and I was stood there with the spinning rod it started hailing uh, and I fished in that for probably about half an hour uh, as it took me up to lunchtime and I then, uh, but that was, I mean I look back at that now that video is probably one of my best performing videos and I wonder why it is. Is it because I'm fishing in hail and it was really stinging hail? Or was it because of the um, uh, uh, the wood burning stove and all that kind of stuff? I'm not sure. Uh, I'd love to know what pe why people like that video so much. Um, yeah, but that was really good. And then after that, I fished on Upper Henderside, um, which was £65 for the day. And that was i can't remember the young lad who who runs it um but he was very knowledgeable and he used to work for the guy who used to run lady kirk or he used to work for the guy called matty uh who runs lady kirk and that was the first my first my sorry my second experience of um fishing from a boat um now the difference between upper henderside and um Delvin and Burbane on the River Tay was on the River Tay it was a motorboat uh, with an outboard and on this he's actually rowing it uh, great fun didn't catch anything but also I was starting to feel really fatigued at this point and the following day and I was so tired I, I just remember being getting out of the boat at two o'clock and saying I can't do this anymore I was so tired and I really I've been fishing uh, for at that point I'd fished for 
um, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen days straight. <laughs> I was knackered, absolutely shattered, uh, and so that meant that uh, I, yeah, I was so tired and I ended it, and then I still had, still to go, tweeds wood, and bowl side. When I got back to the to to the caravan, I went to the curry house you know, where I was staying in Melrose, and I had a curry. And I don't know whether it was the curry or whether it was just the fact that I was so fatigued, but um, I had the worst food poisoning. Uh, I, no, no, sorry, I, I it didn't quite happen like that. I had a curry, and I woke up the next day, and I still felt tired. I went down to Tweedswood. And I met this guy down there. It was very help. All the gillies have been exceptionally helpful. And I started fishing this. And I got to about lunchtime. And I thought I was going to pass out. Not being dramatic. I know I can be dramatic. But not being dramatic. I felt terrible. Uh, I packed up. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh, I came back to the caravan. Um, and then I, I was just sick. Badly sick. And, and shattered then. And I then slept for a day and a half. And I never went to Bowlside in the end. And that was a shame because apparently the day that I, I would have gone, somebody caught a salmon. Uh, and so, yeah. So I learned a lot with my fishing trips. I learned a lot about Scotland and I learned a lot about uh, why and ask and fishing in Wales. I have a question for you. Where should I go? Where should I go next? Uh, I fished in. I fished on the River Tay, and the Spey, and the Tweed, in Scotland. In Wales, I fished on the Usk and the Wye. I want to go for salmon. I am a novice salmon fisherman. Okay, uh, and so I'm still learning a great amount. But I'm struggling to work out where to go next. Should I go back to Scotland? Uh, should I go to? <clears throat> should I go across to Ireland? Um, should I go up north, like uh, on the Tyne or something like that? I don't know. Uh, but I want your help, really, to uh, uh, plan my next trip. And uh, maybe, if you're up for it, we can meet up and we go fishing together. Uh, uh, certainly. Uh, would love to have that experience as well. So um, this is my question to you. Where next? Please put your uh, suggestions in the comments section below. Okay, and then uh, I can work out where I'm going to go next and we can make my next adventure uh, based upon your recommendations. Thank you again for your continued support and I look forward to potentially going fishing with you one day. All right. Take care then. Bye-bye.